In this video, I am going to explain scapular humeral rhythm. Scapular humeral rhythm. What is that? It is movement about scapula and humeral. So this is related to shoulder movement. If I say simply, when you move shoulder, your scapula and shoulder joint need to move simultaneously. They need to work together. And there is the ratio about movement of scapula and humerus. That is why the movement is called scapulohumeral rhythm. I am going to explain its ratio and related muscle. So when you raise up arm, shoulder, this way, scapula also needs to move this way. Let's say when you do shoulder abduction, scapula needs to do upward rotation. Upward rotation. Vice versa, when you do shoulder adduction, shoulder adduction, scapula needs to do downward rotation. This upward rotation and downward rotation are key for scapular humeral rhythm. Okay? I shall say it again. When you do shoulder abduction, scapula needs to do upward rotation. When you do shoulder adduction, scapula needs to do downward rotation. Okay? This relationship is very important to understand scapular humeral rhythm. Okay? So let's say you want to do shoulder abduction 90 degrees, okay, 90 degrees. So this ratio, when you want to do 90 degrees shoulder abduction, your shoulder joint and scapula needs to move together. So they share this movement and this ratio. When you want to raise up 90 degrees, the ratio of movement is 2 to 1. So shoulder moves 2. Scapula moves 1. So what is exact number? In 90 degrees, it's 2 to 1. Thus, shoulder needs to move 60 degrees. Okay? And scapula needs to move 30 degrees. What is 60 plus 30 equals to 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees shoulder abduction. Scapula is actually moving 30 degrees. Actually, shoulder has to work only 60 degrees. Then you can do 90 degrees shoulder abduction. Let me give you another question. How about 120 degrees abduction? What is the movement of shoulder and scapula? So 120 degrees. You want 120 degrees. Do you remember the ratio? 2 to 1. Shoulder needs to move 2. Scapula needs to move 1. So it's 80 degrees for shoulder joint and 40 degrees to scapula, right? Thus, you can move 120 degrees. One last question. Okay, now you want to move shoulder 180 degrees. Okay, you want 180 degrees. Ratio 2 to 1. Okay. Shoulder needs to move 120 degrees, right? Then scapula needs to move 60 degrees. Now you can accomplish 180 degrees movement. That's very important, right? Scapula must 
move to accomplish shoulder movement. Okay? Shoulder joint is not only joint to accomplish your shoulder movement. Scapula needs to move simultaneously. Thus, you can say movement of scapula is freaking important. Now, let me explain what kind of muscles do upward rotation or downward rotation. Let me list up three muscles which do upward rotation. Okay, upward rotation. One muscle is serratus anterior. Serratus anterior. It runs like this. It attaches on rib cage and anterior part of scapula. Serratus anterior. Next one is upper fiber of trapezius. Upper trapezius. It's going like this. The last one is lower part of trapezius. Lower trapezius, it runs like this. So think about their vector, serratus anterior. Upper fiber of trapezius, lower fiber of trapezius. When they contract this way, this way, this way, now they can move scapula to upward rotation. Does it make sense? It's very important. They are so important for scapula movement. Upward rotation, serratus anterior, upper trapezius, and lower trapezius. Now let me explain downward rotation muscles. Downward rotation. One muscle is this one. This is rhomboid. Rhomboid that connects scapula and thoracic spines. Next one is levator scapula. Levator scapula runs like this way, towards cervical spines. Last one is on anterior part. That runs like this. This is pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor. These three muscles do downward rotation. Let's imagine Rhomboid contracts this way. Levator scapula contracts this way. And pec minor contracts to this way. These vectors bring scapula to downward rotation. Okay? Upward rotation, three muscles. Downward rotation, three muscles. So think about it. When downward rotation muscles get tight, that inhibits movement of upward rotation, right? You can't do upward rotation. Thus, you can't accomplish shoulder abduction completely because you need scapular humeral rhythm for shoulder movement. Vice versa, if upward rotation muscles get tight, that's also a problem. You can't fully uh, perform upward rotation. Think about uh, lower trapezius, upper trapezius. When they get tight, that's also a problem that can't do proper function. Now, that also can inhibit scapular movement. Thus, balance of these six muscles are key for shoulder movement. I have to keep it repeating. Scapular movement is crucial for shoulder movement. In this video, I explain the mechanics of scapular humeral rhythm. Scapular movement is crucial for shoulder movement. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. See you next video.